Joining us today exclusively is Southwest Airlines Chairman and CEO Gary Kelly. Gary, welcome back. Good to talk to you today. Hey, great to be with you all. I hope you won't mind me starting with this bit about the shutdown because you did put that $15 million number on it. But it sounds like at least when it comes to things like Hawaii, uh, maybe the effect is a little bit bigger in scope. Well, yeah, I hate to start out talking about that. Uh, I, I do want to at least get in uh, talking about Southwest Airlines. We had a uh, really strong finish to 2018. I'm very proud of our people. And uh, despite this shutdown, we're going to find a way to have a really great 2019. Our outlook for 2019 is superb. We've got really strong revenue momentum, despite the penalties that we're seeing from the shutdown. And our people are doing a fantastic job. We've got uh, a, a, a pretty decent cost outlook for 2019, but um, if things continue with, uh, and, and barring anything unforeseen, uh, it will be a stellar year. So uh, it's just a good time to be at Southwest. But the shutdown is painful. Uh, it's certainly painful for the people that are furloughed. It is very frustrating. Uh, it, you know, in our business at least, we deal with the federal government uh, in a very intimate way. Uh, the TSA screens every passenger. Uh, the FAA, of course, uh, manages every flight. So my hat is off to all the federal workers that are showing up. They, they are heroic. Uh, they shouldn't have to put up with this. It has impacted our certification process for Hawaii. Um, that creates a lot of slop for us to manage. But again, as you can tell by our outlook, uh, we're going to manage it. We're going to find a way, uh, and hopefully um, our government will get its act together and get this shut down uh, over with and get these people back to work and get our country back to work. When the pilots union and the flight attendants and the air traffic controllers get together and warn about the system potentially breaking over time, if this goes on, are they overstating it? No, 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 they're not overstating it. So as an example, and I'll just uh, editorial comment that the, the the thought that you would refer to people and their jobs as non-essential is absurd. Everybody is essential or they shouldn't have a job. But as an example, the FAA is not hiring replacement uh, air traffic controllers or training them. All those are considered non-essential functions and that is shut down. So that means that where, where the FAA is already stressed in terms of staffing all of the uh, centers around the country, now they'll be even more stressed. So um, there is a risk that air traffic will have to be slowed down because they will be safe. They do a phenomenal job managing our airspace and they will be safe, but it may not be very efficient uh, and it certainly puts a lot of stress on the people there. It is a crazy way to run our country, absolutely absurd. Well, Gary, I want to change it to something that is the opposite of the crazy way the country is uh, led and that's Herb Kelleher. Uh, we all know Herb. Uh, we very rarely ever talk about CEOs who are outsized, particularly outsized CEOs who make a ton of money and don't lose money. I just want to give you a chance to talk about this great man because he's uh, one of the few icons who really did something in an industry uh, that is amazing. He made money. Well, thank you, Jim. And uh, I know we would all much rather talk about Herb and, and continue to pay tribute to him. Um, you know, he changed the world, literally changed the world. And uh, when he started Southwest Airlines back in the late 60s and finally took off in 1971, only rich people could afford to fly. And it truly democratized the skies. It gave people the freedom to fly. Uh, I was reading, you know, there's been so much uh, written about Herb and his life. And um, it's been so gratifying to see that kind of uh, coverage and all the attention uh, on him. And, and all the accolades for all of his accomplishments. But uh, uh, one of the articles I was reading recently is how purpose-driven he and Southwest have been. And of course, he's instilled that in our company, and it will live on. Uh, but that's our people believe in this. They believe in keeping our costs low, keeping fares low, making flying affordable. Uh, and the impact on the economy ab absolutely, is absolutely enormous. We're anxious to go to Hawaii, and they want us to come because they know we're going to bring low fares, that more people are going to be able to fly. We're going to bring much needed competition, especially inter-island in Hawaii. And it's just a recent example of what he's been doing for, uh, you know, 48 years. So uh, he'll be sorely me... missed. He was so loved and, uh, and he loved us and we, and we knew that. He's just a larger than life figure uh, 
if there ever was one. What's it like to be you? And I think this because I happen to think Tim Cook's doing a great job innovating, but people say, well, this is no Steve Jobs. Uh, I think Kevin Johnson will maybe hopefully on tomorrow doing a remarkable job at Starbucks. But yeah, okay, so he's no Howard. I mean, what's it like to follow the greatest titan in your industry? Well, uh, you know, what a blessing in my life, you know, to be a part of Southwest Airlines, to. Uh, know her for 33 years to work for him for all of those years uh, and he's been retired uh, by the way as ceo for almost 20 years and chairman is uh, for 10 years but he remained my friend and my counselor and my mentor uh, he's like a father to me so um it's been one of the greatest blessings in my life to to work for herb and um you know he gave this company a big old push and now it's up to us to make sure that we continue it on. So it's it's very inspirational to just relive a lot of the moments that we had with Herb over the decades. Uh, <laughs> and I know all the people at Southwest uh, will will want to make him proud. And I hear you laughing. And oh man, have we laughed telling stories about Herb? And <laughs> that's there, that's there are too many to tell ever here. Met him, Gary. Yep, everybody who ever knew him knows exactly what you mean. Before we let you go, uh, one question on just tactically on load factor. Journal did a piece last couple of weeks about how planes may be a little bit thinner uh, in in terms of being full than they have been in the past. Are you seeing that trend? No, no. You know, our our load factor for 2018 was right up there with uh, you know what we've seen over the last four years. It wasn't a record load factor, but again, it was very close. Um, we we're seeing really nice revenue growth on a unit basis uh, with yields. We've got much better uh, revenue management tools in place, which are a part of that. And you know, we gave credit to that in our earnings release. But my expectation right now, as an example for 2019, is that we'll see higher load factors in 19 as compared to uh, where we were in 2018. Gary, thanks for coming on. A uh, lot of uh, other factors to consider yeah. this quarter, but we always appreciate it. Gary Kelly, yeah. uh, the CEO yeah, of Southwest bet. Airlines.